is it cold in here? Or have I just been assimilated and replicated my DNA by the thing? Or is it just me? It's hard to tell. Bert, is it cold in here? Or are you looking a little thingy right now? I don't know. <laughs> that dog is looking at me a little suspicious. Oh, oh my God. Not only, I'll tell you what, not only does the dog die in this one, but <laughs> she she dies hard. Hi, thank you for listening. Welcome to The Swamp. <laughs> it's our podcast. It's an acronym. Stays for some whack-ass movie podcasting. And this week's episode is not officially sponsored, but I will say it is sponsored by DoesTheDogDie.com, a wonderful mm-hmm. resource where you can uh, put in the name of a media and it will tell you uh, what possibly upsetting things might. Actually, genuinely, mm-hmm. I was making a joke, but I'm being genuine. I give this as a reference to parents often at the library. I work at a library. Yeah. And I give this as a reference of like, if you want to just gauge how, like for your kid, but like I do it for myself, right? If something is going to be a little spooky yeah. and I might not want to see a big spider or something, it does the dog die.com is a great website where it just tells you, of course, does the dog die, but just tr- things that might be generally triggering or upsetting. And if you're like, yeah, I don't really want to watch a movie where someone, uh, you know, gets cut open with a scalpel, then no. the movie will tell you in the most non spoilery way that it mm-hmm. can, uh, that that is something that you will encounter with this media. So it's great to just sort of reference <laughs> if there are certain things that you would like to avoid can always scan it through does the die doc to- does the dog die.com which of course <laughs> this movie is a big fat yes the dog yeah not only does die but it's like probably the most horrific body <laughs> horror Truly. fur horror puppy horror oh, i don't like th- i don't like that phrase but yes <laughs> husky husky horror some <laughs> some husky mutilation oh um, my god just yeah the 1982 film, The Thing. The Thing, if uh, yes. you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're, we're backlogging. We're backtracking. We're doing some classic horror this month. Yeah. And what what better way to jump into this month than with a little more body horror? We saw The Substance like two weeks ago. Loved Talked it. Talked about it on the Patreon. Loved yeah. it. I think I might be a body horror girly. I think I might be... Um, well, I have a lot of scenes in this that I want to ask you about and see if it did something for you or not well yes i loved all of it to to give you an upfront oh, okay, blanket okay. statement all of the goop the slime the gore <laughs> i was obsessed I, with all of it maybe you are body horror girly i was i was really interested to see if it was just going to be a one-off thing with the substance because maybe it just feels unique to me because i haven't seen enough body horror mm-hmm. but that felt like something new and something a little different and fresh as compared to this. I felt like I knew what I was kind of getting into. Um, I didn't. (laughs) Well, of course, 1982 is like, you know, everything kind of has to be practical for the most part. Whereas I think some modern body horror has a little more leeway to do that blend of of practical and CGI, mm-hmm. so it can be like really realistic. Really fucked up. This yeah. is you can tell that they're practical effects, which I think kind of removes that layer of reality. Like you can tell mm-hmm. that it's a sculpture, specifically like the, the two the two split face man yeah. corpse that mm-hmm. they find at the Norwegian base that, that they're like running the test on, like fucking creepy. But you can tell that somebody carved that out of like yes. whatever polymer fucking mm-hmm. clay. Um, sure. It looks it looks amazing. Why yes, of oh, course, yes. but it just kind of detaches me from that visceral, disgusting, uh-huh. nasty feeling you get when the body horror is like a little too real. Too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is why okay. I actually really liked this film because I thought it was more of a, a beautiful display of practical effects and interesting uh, like production design choices rather than being yeah. something that truly shook me to my core. Yeah, which is why I think that, yeah, body horror might be for you. And you know what? There just might be a handful of things in here that it's your brain. Um, for me, for me, it was in the third act where he sticks his fingers into um, one of the last guy's like cheeks, basically. Oh, yes. You know what I'm talking skin, about? And the skin mm-hmm. was like melding together. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I really liked that. No, mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. not for you. You did not no, like that. No, it was for me. That was that oh. I, I actually appreciate it because I don't get freaky with it quite to the same degree that you do. 
I think I, yeah, I just, I think I need to go on a Cronenberg, like, bender this Halloween mm. season, this October. I think I need to catch up on, like, I've never seen Crash. I've never seen, like, mm-hmm. some some key Cronenberg body horror mo- moments, but um, love The Fly. Mm. Shouts out to The Fly. I think that's maybe mm-hmm. an, an origin point in my body horror journey. But I I'm do- excited to see you off on this journey. Thank you. I, I should have known, because the call is coming from inside the house, because <laughs> I... I'm kind of a, a awkward person and I don't like do well in uh, sort of like really rigid social situations, such as like the first day of class, right? In school where it's like, say your fun <laughs> fact. I'm like, I'm going to kill myself. Like, I don't want to yeah. meet people like that. So I did, I had mm-hmm. a really hard time in college making friends. Um, well, just yeah, I, makes I, sense. I, found, I mean, yeah, I think a lot of people do, but just like, I especially found a lot of those situations to be just like, really forced and like meeting people in your classes. I don't know. It just, it didn't work out for me. Right. And then I was like pondering, I was like, why am I so lonely? I'm in college. I'm like trying to make friends with people. And then I'm like, damn girl, you got to evaluate your own behaviors because I'm up here. Uh, goody two shoes, of course, sitting in like the first or second row fully on my laptop, watching ingrown toenail removal videos like on (laughs) fucking scrolling through Instagram, watching like not even Dr. Pimple Uh. Popper. Dr. Pimple Popper is too, uh, like, clean for me. Like, I want some nasty, I want some nasty scalpel action happening on my, yeah, I want some, like, extractions of nasty goop. Um, And I love to watch that kind of stuff. So I'm like, (laughs) maybe that's why, that's maybe why I didn't have any friends. (laughs) Thank God you're not one of those girls that, like, it has like chronic ingrown toenails or something like that because you would not have toes at this point. It's actually so great. I have a husband who has chronic ingrown toenails, so I just get <laughs> it's to a watch. Perfect setup for you. It's awesome. I don't even you have to deal. Seat. Right. I don't even have to deal with the uh, extraction pain and process that is ingrown yeah. toenails are no fucking joke. Those shit fucking hurt. But oh, yeah. I get to. Yes. I just get to watch while my husband does DIY surgery on his own toe, uh-huh. and I'm fully enabling him. I'm like, yes, babe. I'll hand you the scalpel. You, I'm the. I'm like do, in the OR. I get scrubbed up, and I'm like, do you backseat drive and say, wait, no, try this. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless he asks, unless he's like, hey, will you take a look at this? And I'm like, oh, well, yes. Thank you for calling in an expert. Um, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. A, I'm a zit popper as well. I want to pop other people's zits, which is I'm working on it. You know, I don't do that as much anymore because that's actually so gross. Um, yeah, I I didn't think I was one of those. And then I got into a relationship and I was like, oh, OK. I see I the appeal. Have to speak. Yeah, I have to speak my truth. Yeah, exactly. It's camaraderie. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Teamwork makes these blackheads eradicate from the skin. Or does it? Because often I'm just like, oh, it looks worse now. I'm like, I did pop them, but it looks worse. You have an open yeah, gash on your back. Yeah, now there's the oil of two people's hands yeah. on your face. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. She just comes back. I mean, it's really like the three-headed dog or whatever, you know? Cut right? out one head. <laughs> it grows back. It grows back yep. twice as bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I do. I feel mm. like my my uh, it, interest with body horror is kind of interesting because as a small child, I have all these really core memories of waking up in the middle of the night and coming into the living room, like when you're little, to do the, like, Mom, I woke up. My parents sure. watched a lot of House, that TV show House, so I would often uh. walk in and have there be some sort of, like, graphic surgical medical drama happening on mm-hmm. the TV. Mm-hmm. So, like, the concept of, like, hospitals and medicine and, and surgery specifically, like, really freaked me out as a kid. Like, mm-hmm. I did not like getting shots. I always thought it was going to be something... Because in House, obviously, it's so dramatic. They're like, we need to cut him open. I thought that was yeah. going to happen to me, like, every time I went to the doctors. I mean, it has certainly happened once or twice. <laughs> well, but so then, throughout my life, is I got, uh, you know, su- normal surgeries and stuff that you sure. get. And I was always really pissed that I didn't get to, like, see my tonsils after they took them out. I'm like, it should be my fundamental human right to <laughs> take my tonsils home in a jar of clu- fluid so I can display them in my home. Like, that is not okay. I should get to keep my tonsils. They were in my body. <laughs> if they, I yeah. think if... If they, like, remove an organ, you should get to keep it if you want. I feel like you could... I feel like I've seen people request that. You know? I know I know pe- people have, like, got... People have gotten, like, top surgery and, like, kept their tits in really? jars. Like they, no, I feel like that's truly, like, a biomedical hazard. Like, they do not let you do that. I don't know. They at least let them see it. 
Well, that's what I, that's all I want. Honestly, good for them. Good good for you if you got to see your thing that they took out of you post surgery because I'm obsessed now. Mm-hmm. I'm like I think I have the fundamental human right that I should be able to have my tonsils. I'm sure have- you haven't like collected like teeth and made jewelry out of it. Teeth. Yet. Teeth. You know I was what I mean? counting I was counting my teeth the other day. I have a low mm-hmm. level of teeth. I think I have 24 teeth in my Did whole you head. get a lot pulled? Yeah, I got like 10 of them pulled. Like, Shit. like a lot. See, I, I mean, maybe not 10. That's, that, some of them were baby teeth or like wisdom teeth don't really count either. But I only have 24. I think you're supposed to have 32. How many molars do you have? Like one, like four? How many molars do you have? They must have ripped like... Two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that checks out. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I have all the hardware. Not all the hardware, but I have some of the hardware. When they um, wired my jaw shut... There were screws mm. like in mm-hmm. like that fundamentally were holding my jaw shut. And then they took the screws well, out yes. and the, the doctor was joking like, oh, you want to keep these? And I was like, yes. And he was like, oh, and I was like, yeah, put them in a bag <laughs> and give them to me. He's like, oh, well, we have to like de like disinfect them and like put them through a special process. It'll take like 10 minutes. And I was like, OK, I'll sure. wait. I'll wait. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the screws. I have them. Yes. I just think I think I should get to keep that. It was in my head. I should get to keep it. Fuck it. Well, you're just a crafty guy, too. There's a lot that can be done. I mean, not with, like, say something like your tonsils. But certainly, like. <laughs> I cast them in resin. I fully cast my tonsils in resin and wear them as earrings. Now that, now that is some body horror, bitch. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> lovely earrings. What are those? Oh, they're my tonsils. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no, you used to have insane tonsils too. They touched each other. They touched that's each. So they fucked. they knocked into each other in my mouth. That's how big they were. That's so it's crazy. Fucked. Yeah. So maybe maybe I, want- I like body horror because I have an interesting relationship with my own body. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe let's unpack that. Not on the podcast. Um. I feel. Like, I feel like anyone that's been listening for a while, like, probably has a decent understanding of your medical history. Oh my god, I love to share it. I'm like, do you want to see my dossier? I'm like, you want to see my files? Um, I well, love to like. We should get a team together on the Discord to just, like, dissect you. I know. Are any of you swamp listeners in medical school? No. You're probably, you're way too smart. We've at least got one medical school listener. I feel like someone's reached out before. Do any of you happen to be uh, specializing in in sleep studies? Because, yeah, let me know. We can maybe set up a Zoom call, you and I. Um, Oh, my God. My freaking insurance got declined the other day for the first time in my life. A bitch turns 26 and rolls in her own insurance. I felt like such an adult, you know, got booted off my parents' plan. Whatever. I have a job now. Cool. I have insurance. And then I went to CVS and they were like, this is not, this is not happening. And I was like, well, guess I'll just not get healthcare anymore. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Healthcare system's so bad. You have our podcast listeners giving you advice. Yeah, yeah, right. American healthcare is so bad. I'm begging undergraduate biology students to look down my cavities and let me know what's up. Use me as a, a case study. Why don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, oh, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about The Thing. Um, I had never seen this movie. We covered Halloween. Neither did I. John Carpenter's Halloween. We covered, I think maybe last year. Um, and I hadn't been too involved with John Carpenter's body of work. I knew he, like, was that guy, but... I, yeah. as a as a sort of horror bystander, never really got into it too much. Uh, but this movie did pleasantly surprise me. I think I liked it vastly more than I liked Halloween, personally. Halloween is fucking boring. And it's, yeah. I think Halloween is, again, the, in the same way that, like, Psycho is kind of fucking boring. It's just been done bigger and better at this point. Mm-hmm. In my <laughs> opinion. In my opinion. I think that might be a, a bit of a hot take. I think a lot of people love Halloween and I get it it's classic but I just think like yes it set the groundwork but now it's been outdone I and I feel almost inversely about this one the thing is I was like oh I would throw this on for a rewatch again for sure like this I almost feel like the iterations or the imitations of this are less good whereas I think uh, Halloween provided some foundational genre groundwork right of 
the you know the spooky Halloweeny you know uh, slasher mm-hmm. kind of drama. Whereas this one, I'm like, ah, has anyone done this sort of like Among Us? Not to not to Gen Z it up, but like it's literally no. like playing mafia, right? It's like who paranoia based? Who can we not trust? Who has been infected by the mm-hmm. thing? I'm trying to think of other movies that have really tried to capitalize off of that, <laughs> like you know, who can we not trust? Who do yeah. we have to call out kind of thing? And I just think <laughs> just that this- Clue. Clue! <laughs> well, they also, they fully remade the thing in like 2011 or something. Really? Yeah. And it, hmm. interestingly to me, the thing initially in the 80s was a total flop. Financial- Really? Disaster. I think well, it didn't well, make that, back its it, budget it was also It was also a remake in the 80s. It, it's one of those classic horrors. Oh, really? What's the what's mm-hmm. the original though? Because we're talking um, about the 1982 John Carpenter movie, which I know is based off of a yes. book, I think. 1951. Oh, interesting. The thing from another world. So. Oh, which is probably based on the same book. Interesting. I did not know that. I assumed this was the original because this is like the iconic one people often pull to in reference. Um, but yeah, I just, I think that that whole, um, you know, calling out who could be the suspect thing can get really boring really fast. And I found Mm -hmm. this movie to be interesting, stylized, great pacing. I thought we got a good pop of the gory body horror every so often to keep me roped in, right? Like we got the exploding dog scene pretty early, kind of awesome. As soon as it started to kind of drag, they would hit me with something important and something cool to look at that kind of would veer it off course. Whereas I do mm-hmm. think a lot of the like, no, I think you're the guy. No, I think you're the guy. It's like gets so mm-hmm. old so fast that I can't really think of any movies who've done it since that I would watch instead of this one, honestly. Yeah, couldn't I couldn't say. But no, the I well they hit you hard and fast with the dog. Shooting at the dog. So the, yeah, the movie starts out <laughs> with a, a husky's like running through the Antarctic tundra. We are told that the year is 1982 as is the year that the movie came out. Do we really yeah. think you, do I, you have to tell me that it's present day if the people are dressed so clearly, like those guys were in their fucking 80s little cut off denim vests. I'm like, you don't have to tell me it's the 80s, John. I, I can tell. <laughs> no, but I appreciate it. Especially, you know what I mean? It's present day. I, I can pick up on that. But so we get the setting car- title card, though, that we're in Antarctica, that it's an American research base called, you know, like the Operation 81 or fucking whatever. Yeah. Um, and we get this dog running and they're shooting at the dog. And at first I was like, are they shooting at the dog or are they trying to shoot something else? And the dog can like pick like hunting, you know, how like some dogs uh-huh. like collect the corpses of the bunnies sure. or fucking whatever i was like what are they doing and i was like oh they're really they're really trying to kill that dog uh-huh. that dog is zigzagging he's been trained military yeah. operation trained dog um knows how to avoid the sniper rifles from the helicopter king mm-hmm. i love that um when i pause on amazon the very first credit that comes up with the little imdb you know crediting who's in the film was oh, always was always fucking jed the dog <laughs> jed the dog gets first <laughs> credit as he should. As he should. Yeah. Quite frankly, because that dog was putting in work. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's basically for a little plot recap of the thing. It's uh, these Norwegian people who are also at some sort of research base are chasing after this dog because as we later find out, they're Spoiler. kind of got, got by the, the thing. And they're kind of mm-hmm. like, fuck, we got to get this before it spreads which is sort of the end of our story that we get to, but sort of transferring the thing from the Norwegian base to the American base by way of a husky dog. And then they land in a helicopter and then they just like accidentally blow up their own helicopter for some fucking reason. Just sheer, yeah. Like you have to think just like sheer stupidity. Lots of explosive dynamites, flamethrowers going on in this movie by people who, are they trained to use them? Who's honestly to say? Because there's yeah, a lot of tell. lit dynamite being thrown around. And I'm like, uh-huh. I would have given that a little more thought, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. go for it. Why don't you? Yeah, whatever you have to do, I guess. I have never been in this situation, so... And we're taken to this American research base, which has 12 men on it. Mm -hmm. Um, And the main guy who we come to sort of follow is McCready, who's Kurt Russell. I'll tell you what. I hate everything about the name. And the actor, like, yeah. That really, that, for some reason, that just, like, rubbed me the wrong way, almost. 
I think Kurt Russell will fundamentally always rub me the wrong way because I know he's a libertarian, um, which <laughs> yeah. unfortunately I'm not really willing to look past that. Uh, I'm not the kind of person who can have a cordial conversation with someone whose conservative beliefs uh, conflict with mine in a way, you know, oh, we're great friends, but we just, I think it's like Kurt Russell and John Carpenter very much have that relationship where it's like, we don't always see eye to eye, but we're willing to put mm-hmm. it aside for our creative relationship. I'm like, okay, it's because you're two white men. Like, that's that's why you're willing yeah, to put so your differences yeah, aside. You're, you're afforded that luxury. Exactly. I don't put my differences aside for fucking anyone, really. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm like, you say, if you're labeling yourself, identifying openly as a libertarian, you simply uh, are ruled out of ever being hot to me, which is really fucking yeah. Disappointing because yeah, Kurt Russell in this movie pretty. would. It's working for me, but unfortunately, mm. his whole demeanor does just give me like guy who's a, a little too ick. cocky, a little hard too. Ick. He's drinking the J and B whiskey scotch straight from the bottle, and I'm I like, know. whatever, man. He's a helicopter pilot. Where's the vulnerability? Give me, <laughs> give me something. Give me something soft to work with, please. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but hot. So Kurt Russell as McCready. He's <laughs> unfortunately the, hot. <laughs> unfortunately hot. He's this helicopter pilot, and he kind of takes on this leadership role, which despite the fact that there are like other like scientists and doctors studying into this, he for some reason gets to call the shots just because he like speaks with authority, I guess. <sighs> well, no, it's because he has that big ass cowboy. It's not even a cowboy hat, but that gigantic capacious hat (laughs) a capacious hat and honestly i'm a follower in times that i need guidance i'll look to whoever has the biggest hat on and listen to what they have to tell me to do so i I can't blame them i'm out here i'm nalls i'm out here roller skating and being like what do you need me to do go get the goop okay (laughs) Uh, (laughs) oh the way that this movie had me low-key romanticizing that antarctic base absolutely not really no oh my god no. i was like oh, i, I, I go. like don't get me wrong i really appreciated the, like the 80s science lab vibe um but romanticizing it never not romanticizing but like i just liked the set design and i'm like it would be kind of lit 12 homies preferably not all men if we could get a little yeah. diversity up in there but i'm like 12 research homies in the fucking antarctic lab playing pool Smoking a J. It seems like a good time to me. Roller skating around. Right? Fair enough. I, I think that just says something about everyone's yearning for community these days. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, maybe I never, just need to go like play was, pool at a bar rather than... I'm like, yeah. I need to go to Antarctica to play pool. <laughs> never could I ever see myself wanting to be somewhere like cold and desolate like that. I grew up in New England. It gets pretty cold around here. I hate it. I hate it so much. Did you ever have like the science fiction sort of like by proxy fantasy though of like going into space or something or doing some sort of mission where you have to go and be alone with people for an extended period of time to like get a job done? No, you don't, you don't vibe with that. I'm like, I would go to Antarctica for three years to save the penguins or whatever, but I wouldn't in real life. I wouldn't, but in my, in my (laughs) fantasy mind, in my mind palace, Uh I'm like, let me Mm -hmm. fantasize about a world in which I'm an Antarctic researcher. I'm going to. Sure have a little tryst and fall in love on the base. Like, that's let's work with that. That's what does. Yes, I'm going to roller skate around. It'll be great. Yeah. I, I just liked the... I think I like the set design a lot. Yeah, no, I, I definitely gel with you on that. But they basically... This dog is a fucked, and they sort of get the <laughs> sense that this dog is fucked because then... Uh, it explodes. <laughs> it explodes into... <laughs> well, its skin peels off. I don't know. <laughs> So there, there's like 900 different ways that this dog's insides become outside of its body. <laughs> right. And it's like got these tentacles that are trying to wrap onto the other dogs to pull and them they're in. Fast. It's all oh, I, I need to watch some sort of behind the scenes documentary about how they got those tentacles to whip around like that. Like, I think I'm actually more interested in seeing like a behind the scenes scene by scene breakdown than I am to actually watch this movie. Like, I, I think just I would have just like, to, like a puppet museum or something like that. <laughs> I guess so. I just thought it was really interesting because it's clearly these like interesting robots, right? That like open of up course. and then more goo gets pushed out and then the yeah. tentacles come out as 
Uh, I think a large portion of this movie's budget was put towards both research and development and supplies used for the practical effects. Absolutely. Um, And I think that's why this movie failed financially is because so much resources were put towards that. And then people thought that the end product was just like way too expensive to be worth what it looks like. Um, They were kind of just like, oh, so you guys clearly spent a lot of money on your special effects, but the rest of this movie doesn't really hold up, which I would disagree with. I think the special effects are the film. That's what you're going to see. So I don't understand the, you know, criticism there. I'm like, yeah, Yeah. they look like multi-million dollar special effects. That's what you get when you... I I think they still look great. It holds up. Oh, it absolutely holds up. I think obviously like a lot of practical effects from the 80s and everything like that. Um, I think by the time we got to the 80s, it was either great or there were some pretty janky ones. This thing, that thing, the other thing. Well, guess what? We're going to pick our favorite things today here on Jen's interim podcast segment, Chocolate or Vanilla. She's going to say two things and we're all going to say which one we like better. Uh, Jen, is there a theme this week? So there is, I got this one ready for um, Psycho, but Mm -hmm. I think that theme still fits because it's two people who played the same part in like sequels and you have to say who you like better. Mm. Oh, okay. Work. So I'm just going to say, you don't have to say like, if you like their portrayal of that character, but I'm just going to say- It's just like the actor in general. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Seth Green or Finn Wolfhard? I think you mean chocolate or vanilla. The name Ooh. of the second. <laughs> chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Oh, I'll say chocolate this week. You're crazy. Um, I know. I will, <laughs> Off the rails. I'll say chocolate for this week. Yay! A chocolate sweep. <laughs> I almost skipped it. Oh my god. Um, so Seth Green or Finn Wolfhard? Seth Green, I think, is more iconic. Finn Wolfhard is on the up and up for sure. But I'm not going to give him his flowers quite yet. We have yet to see him really do anything that I've found to be of note. Um, but I yeah. Have hope. I have faith. He seems fine. But I'll pick Seth Green. Seth Green because he's in Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, obviously. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Um, I just saw Saturday Night, and he's in it for 0.2 seconds. And that's about the most acting credits he's gotten in the last, like, year. So... Um, was Saturday Night really good? Um, it was cute. Yeah. Yeah, I liked I it. I see it. Yeah. I saw you give it three and a half stars. I was I was interested to hear your, your take. It's just fine? Yeah, just fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would see and it. That, like, I would see it again. But yeah, it was, yeah. That just came out, like, today, right? Something mm-hmm. like that. I'm going to say Finn because I find Seth Green to be one note. Fair yeah, enough. yeah, I guess so. That's that's a fair criticism. <laughs> Speaking of one note, <laughs> the <laughs> Cinderella from 1997 or 2015. Brandy or Lily James? You mean Lily James is one note? You best not be speaking ill of Brandy. <laughs> yeah, for real. Movie wise, I'm gonna say she. she <laughs> she's a little. You think I, you're calling Brandy like, one note? Not for as that, a singer. Will, for that, I will choose Brandy. Yeah, she's singing. She's acting. She's doing it all. She's putting in the work. I have really no take on this. I'll go for Brandy. Okay, I'm going to go Lily James because I love her. Next one, some more Cinderella. It's from Cinderella Story from 04 or 08. Hilary Duff or Selena Gomez? <gasps> Hilary Duff. Yeah, easy. When I- you say that's gay, do you realize what you say? That's so girl wearing a skirt as a top. Do you know that commercial? <laughs> I think about it every day. I don't know that commercial. It was like it oh ran on God, Disney really? Channel, and it was like Hillary Duff telling people not to use gay as a slur. It's, it's iconic. Classic. I'll post the link in the description below. Homework, everyone's got to watch it. I will say Hillary Duff also. Nice. Um, next one from Magnificent Seven from 1960 or 2016. Yul Brenner or Denzel Washington? Magnificent Seven. What even is that? No idea. It's like a Western, but I just, you know the two actors though, right? Yeah, I know who Denzel is, of course. Right. Who's the first Who's one? Who's the first guy? Yul Brenner is the bald guy from The King and I and Westworld. And he's, uh. he, the movie was from 1960. I thought he was a big enough star power that you would know him. The King I'm, and I? I'm unfortunately, I do not know this man. I'm sorry to this man. I could pass him on the street and I would not know him. 
I do love Denzel, and I specifically love Denzel in the Gladiator 2 trailer, which I watch almost every day at this point. Denzel Washington in that movie is going to put all those hot boys a run for their money because he serving. Who are you? You're Googling him, Emily? Do we know this man? He's um, bald as a cue oh, ball. Oh, I know him from the Ten yeah. Commandments, which yes. I love. So I'm going to go for your Yule on this one. I loved The King and I growing up, but I will also say Denzel. Um, so speaking of Gladiator, next one. Gladiator 2000 or 2024? Russell Crowe or Pedro Pascal? Um, like, because they're both... I mean, I just can't really forgive Russell Crowe for what he did in my is. <laughs> It's so funny, though, but I just I simply can't say that with like any genuine level of respect. Um, So I'll pick Mr. Pedro Pascal. He was a voice. And I saw last night that movie, The Wild Robot. It's like a new dreamworks one. Was it good? It was fine. It was like it was like we're saying the themes very obviously because it's a kid's movie. But I was just like, ugh, like it's like lazy screenwriting. But the animation was kind of cool. But he was the Mm -hmm. voice of like the sly fox. Yeah. Who knows what's up. That tracks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go Pedro on this one. I'm not very much of a Russell Crowe gal. Prisoner to <laughs> I think he's a talented actor. He just can't really sing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with Pedro also, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, next one is from Little Women from 94 or 2019. Winona Ryder or Saoirse Ronan oh. as Joe? Ooh, two queens, but truly pen to paper, it's Sersha. She's in more stuff yeah. I like, and she's good in everything. But no writer's also good in everything, but just, I don't mm-hmm. know. Sersha, Sersha really is that bitch. Truly. I'm really excited for her new movie, The Outrun, which has been getting a ton of Oscar buzz, so... Glad to see her back and out of the house. What's it about? I haven't heard of that one. Oh, she's, um... Oh, this girl who is struggling with alcoholism, but like goes back home to the island that she grew up on to recover. I think it's Irish. I don't know. Interesting. But yeah, sounds good. Sorsha for the sweep. Of course. Next one is um, Wizard of Oz or The Wiz. So 1939 versus 1978. Judy Garland or Diana Ross. Oh, Two more queens, but ding, ding, ding goes the trolley. I love Judy Garland. Uh, the only redeemable thing about Joker Fuala Du is that Lady Gaga put out that companion album, Harley oh, Quinn, which true. is just her hamming it the fuck up singing Judy Garland songs. And it's everything. And her, that album, is not the versions from the movie. No. In the movie, everyone's always singing like, I'm creepy and I'm scary and like like I'm crazy and I'm whisper singing. That was really the vibe. And so then Lady Gaga had to be like, I was acting there. I need to show you guys that I can bang out a show tune. Yeah. So she put out the companion album of her full belting them. And it's yeah, that's the only good part about that whole media disaster. Yeah, she like she put out a statement saying she had to like unlearn how to sing right to be so bad for this movie that was made bad on purpose as a humiliation (laughs) ritual for incels are you on that train because i low-key am i mean todd phillips made that movie bad on purpose (sighs) i i believe i believe that one reddit thread i read i believe it send it to me (laughs) oh i'm sorry uh judy garland or diana ross oh Oh, judy Judy. yeah judy Judy. Judy. (laughs) Uh, i'm gonna go for diana ross um also icon mm-hmm. so speaking of lady gaga uh, 1976 <laughs> versus 2018 from a star is born barbara streisand or lady gaga um i'm picking barbara um really I'm barbara streisand on this one but i would like to live in the alternate universe in which we got the version of a star is born starring beyonce oh and my god will smith so <laughs> i'm gonna um timeline jump and pick beyonce mm. no i'll pick barbara Wow, I'm going to go Gaga. 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 Gaga and Barbara. I'm going to go Gaga. Mm. Um, Next one is Penguin uh, representations from Batman in 1992 or 2022 Colin Farrell or Danny DeVito. Here's what I'm going to say about the Colin Farrell penguin discourse. Mm. All right. Is I think Colin Farrell's fine. I think he's, he's a good actor and he's a chill guy and his sex tape is pretty decent compared (laughs) to other celebrities who have sex tapes. Compared to Danny DeVito's. Well, I would, I would inquire about Danny DeVito's personally, but Danny DeVito plays the penguin the way he is because he looks that way. 
<laughs> Colin Farrell is wearing a ridiculous fat suit. I yeah. am generally against fat suit acting. I think you can mm-hmm. hire fat people to play fat roles. I don't mm-hmm. think that that should be a difficult thing to do. The Sopranos is one of the best shows ever, and that show is all just about balding fat men. You can cast them in your stuff, and it can still be respected. I don't know what the deal is with them being like, no, we have to, we have to put so much prosthetic makeup on these young hot men because when they do the press tours, right, it just fucking pisses me off. That, that they think that they're even thinking about that when that's not even a fucking thing. So just hire fat actors. If you want a big fat Italian guy to be the penguin, find him. Ugh. So I'm going to pick Danny DeVito. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Danny on this one. I have very early memories of this movie and him and those penguin hands that he had were so fucking freaky, dude. Oh my God. Yep, I'm going to go um, with Danny DeVito also. Last one, Wicked 2024 or 2003. Um, Ariana and Cynthia or Kristen and Adina? Kristen and Adina, the wickedly yeah, no talented Adina. Ad- <laughs> yeah, it's, it is absolutely no question. And they just continue to bungle this Wicked movie every fucking step along the way. Oh they just released God, the poster, amazing. the official poster. That's of the, it's the iconic silhouette yeah. of the two of them. Of and course, it has to be. Her ear and, she, and she's got her little witchy smirk on. And just the, the poster they released just looks like fucking dog shit. Uh, and I'm like, you had the easiest reference to go off of. It was actually so hard to fuck that up. And they managed to. Yeah. It's truly impressive at this point. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go OGs on this one. Yeah, I'm going to go OGs also. Now I'm going to look up the poster, though. Oh, it's bad, Jen. It's not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, everything that's intriguing about the silhouette, they just removed. She's not even smirking. Her nope. face, dead. Also, mm-hmm. Ariana's face, Flat. like, angled. We... You live under a fucking rock if you don't know that Ariana Grande is playing Glinda. We don't need to see her whole face. Her name is yeah, also I'm, on like, the poster. I, I'm exhausted at this point. Yeah. Nope. Not good. Bummer. <sighs> we'll see what happens. I'm still going to see it on... I'm still going to see it on opening night. Too. Yeah. Uh, thank you, as always, Jen, for being here, doing your intro and podcast segment, Chocolate or Vanilla. We love you, and we'll see you next week. I love you guys. Have an awesome night. Love you, too. Bye. 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 No, I think this rose to the occasion and more so. This, Mm -hmm. it definitely, it looked how I'm sure they wanted it to. um, Because it's fucking scary. It's creepy. It's this this dog thing. So essentially the plot is is that this thing, quote unquote, the thing, is this... uh, bio biomass or whatever that can essentially just like imitate whatever life form it comes into contact with Mm -hmm. um so it finds this dog or it took over the swedish base and then latched onto this dog so now it's in dog form but Mm -hmm. it can shift and sort of absorb other dogs and become this amalgamation of nastiness or it can latch onto a human right and replicate a human so as the dog then explodes we take care of the dog but the thing it sort of grows these weird legs and sort of scuttles away and Mm -hmm. that sort of sets off is the catalyst for it's going to infect the people now and it's going to be able to replicate the person perfectly so how are we going to be able to tell right and they go through this process of sort of ruling out like how does this work it can either fully absorb the person and imitate them but it can also be passed like disease right Mm -hmm. through cells so if you touch it and and use saliva and blood transfer, you can become a thing. Um, So we sort of are laid the ground rules of how the spread of this is going to work. And then it's essentially out of these 12 men on the base, who is already infected, who is going to get infected. And we uh, follow Dr. Blair, who is the, the doctor on the base, and he does some autopsies and he sees that the dog creature is just a dog and the human the nasty human that they find it's just a human so it it looks exactly the same you know scientifically but of course what we see are these like nasty gross uh, body horror esque uh, mm-hmm. creatures uh, and and then, you know, they sort of are doing some more investigation. They go back to the Norwegian base. They find like a spaceship um, that's been in the ice for 10,000 years. So they assume that this thing was frozen and unthawed. And that's how it's been released uh, into the world. And the doctor gets back from his fancy computer that it's a 75% chance that somebody's already infected. I don't know. How, uh-huh. how do we get there? I don't know. Just yeah, an right? 8-bit dial up. And it's like 75%. He's like, well, solid. Uh, we're uh-huh. taking that at face value. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then and then we sort of get into where it starts to get messy. They have to lock the doctor mm. away. The because girls start they, fighting. <laughs> the girlies start fighting. Um, mm-hmm. They're basically like, you're the thing. No, you're, no, the, you're thing. the thing. No, you're the thing. Uh, but it is all left very <sighs> ambiguous to us as the audience who is. We have not been mm-hmm. explicitly told by the movie who isn't isn't infected. So mm-hmm. you kind of get to participate in the speculation of like, oh, well, did I see that person alone with the thing in a mm-hmm. room, basically? Because, you know, you have to be alone with it for it to, you know, glom onto you. And then we do mm-hmm. sort of catch it in the process of, um, I think his name was Bennings. And he was like the bald guy with ginger hair and he and he's getting replicated and they get caught in the act. And he's got Mm -hmm. these weird (laughs) hands, these AI 27 finger hands. And they basically can. They're like, oh, fuck. And they torch him to death. But they're basically like anyone who is infected needs to be eliminated because if this spreads beyond Antarctica. If this spreads to the world, again, the magic computer says that it's going to take a little less than three years to just wipe out the fucking planet. Um, uh-huh. So so Dr. Blair is specifically like, this thing is going to end the world. I need to tie my noose and get my gun in order, stat, because yep. I'm going to have to KMS before this thing gets out, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. What I don't understand is why they didn't just refreeze it. You have flight flowers, you don't have a freeze gun? Freeze again. Freeze again, put it back on the ground. <laughs> Bury her. Be like, okay, well, that will be a problem in another 10,000 years, but not me, bitch. Well, I mean, that's what she tries to do herself. She wants to get refrozen because these guys are giving her a run for her money. Let her refreeze. That's what I'm just let her go. Let her refreeze. She's in Antarctica. What's she going to do? She's not going to make it to the mainland. I think that just says a lot about y- your thoughts and your duty as a human being to the human race. Well, in 10, th- she's been asleep for 10,000 years. If I can buy us another 10,000 years, I think that's not solid. Bad. I think we're not yeah. making it that long anyways. Uh, also true. But yeah. Or, yeah, like, 1982, I, th- I think 1982, they were still pretty um, optimistic about optimistic how long we were going to be. Optimistic about the state of the world. Aww, <laughs> yeah, isn't that cute? we kicking it here? <laughs> isn't that cute? Oh, yeah. you don't think the world's um, going to end in your lifetime. Isn't that fucking precious? <laughs> Okay, Kurt Russell, no wonder you're a libertarian. Yeah, Um, truly. Um, But yeah, so, I mean, she's trying to refreeze herself because these guys are giving her too much of a hustle. It's not worth it. She's like, I'm tired. I just want to go back to sleep. Kurt Um, Russell has a flamethrower that he's using quite liberally. Mm -hmm. Just burning things inside. I'm like, oh, so just everything is fire retardant? Like you, oh, you happen to build your, your... which I'm like, I guess they would in Antarctica. Just build it, make it fireproof. I don't see why not. Uh, but that was real Might convenient well. for them as he was blasting yeah. that thing indoors. Yeah. Yeah. They start testing everyone's blood. People are tied up. Yeah, they've got this theory, this like scientific theory that has not, doesn't seem to have been actually like tested and proved, but they're like, we're going to make this the end all be all where they get everyone's blood samples and they dip a hot wire into it. And their theory is that the blood of the thing will always attack the host rather than normal mm-hmm. blood will just be blood. So they dip the hot wire into the blood and then it just sat, kind of has this anticlimactic sizzle. And then they all look at each other like you passed, which is like, yeah. okay, <laughs> according to who, but of course then we get one where the blood does react and attack. So that kind of proves yeah. of course that it does work. But for the first couple of guys who they're like, all right, you're clean. I'm like, can we be sure about that? Like, I don't think that yeah, this, right. Right. But then, of course, you get the the infected one, and you're like, "Oh, well, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, yeah, that's who, that's what happens." Who then his yes, who then his face starts splitting open, and he starts going absolutely apeshit. Might be like the last big like body horror moment, but yeah, we get we get the dog. We get when he's um. There's somebody dies of a heart attack. I think his name was Norris. And um, yeah, he, and his he head was, like splits off. He was like presumably infected, but then he just sort of dies of a heart attack. And then they try to do an <laughs> autopsy on him, and his stomach, like as they're defibrillating him, opens <laughs> up. Oh my god, I forgot about that. With like this gnashing of teeth, uh, which was which was very yeah, cool and to see. It, yeah, rips the doc's arms off. <laughs> right, yeah, clean clean off. I thought that scene was really cool. And then we get um, the guy with all the hands, of course, all the. Mm-hmm. the 
the, the fingers and yeah, they yeah, burn yeah. him. Yeah, up fingers, yeah. Burn him down. <laughs> and they basically rule out, okay, we've got a clean list of who is and isn't infected, so now mm-hmm. we just sort of have to deal with it, right? Um, but as the story continues to progress, we are constantly reminded that this thing is spreading like a disease through blood and saliva. So anytime that they're sharing food, they're sharing drinks, they're sharing joints, they're passing a bottle around, like this really, yeah. it could be changing on anyway, a dime. Yeah. Um, and basically they just, they end up a bunch of people dying. Um, Fugues, the second in command scientist, he, they say he like accidentally burns himself to death with a flare, but it's also sort of implied that maybe he kills himself at the moment of being infected as to not sure. further spread the disease. His death yeah. is left a little bit uh, like up, ambiguous. up in the air, I guess, which the whole movie is very ambiguous. It's sort of made is us as an audience are supposed to not really know. There's a lot of like <laughs> fan theories and speculation about like what the true order events of this movie are, but I guess John Carpenter mm. is kind of like, I said it the way I said it and you can think what you want, but I'm not going to answer you because I said it the way I said it, which yeah. I can kind of respect, but he's also known to be kind of like a hardo and a pushback on that. Yeah. I'm like, just let people enjoy your shit, right? Like, don't, don't talk. If they want to have fan theories, let them have fan theories. You should mm-hmm. encourage that. That means people are engaging with your art. Uh, it doesn't mean yeah. that you should be like, oh, that's not the way my right. vision was. I don't know. John Carpenter's yeah. like, fine, <laughs> though, I guess. Um, I don't know. There's a There are some people who point out that he, I think the plot of Halloween was like lifted from a screenplay written by someone else, which is, you can uh, sure. corroborate that information somewhere else. But I think, I think John Carpenter might be like kind of a hack in certain ways that all guys that big in Hollywood are probably a little bit of a hack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as far as uh, like toxic male filmmakers go, he's like fine. He's in like, he's in the yellow, mm-hmm. you know, he's in like the middle for me. He's like, whatever. Yeah. It's not, it's not an outstanding example of, of you know, a beacon of great, representation uh, as we see in this movie mm-hmm. yeah but you know he gets a, a soft pass from me i suppose but then yeah basically they all just sort of take each other out until the very end and we just mm-hmm. have uh, Which... our boy keith david and kurt russell at the end together mm-hmm. and it's sort of left to be like well they're gonna fucking die probably because their base yeah. is like incinerated but also they're passing a bottle back and forth if one of them is infected, it's basically over. I I like the idea of like they tried their best, it didn't work. Yeah, and you know and that's what? life, that's bitch. That. That's life, bitch. And I will say I really appreciate that this was sort of like a team effort movie a little bit because I feel like I've seen so much horror where it's the lone survivor for the last you know half of the film or something like that, and that's fine and it's done well um, sometimes. <laughs> But at the same time, I'm like, give me a little interaction. I liked that we sort of got these characters. We get these 12 men, right? And you sort of know Mm -hmm. them on these varying degrees. Of course, we're closest probably with Kurt Russell. And then some of these characters, I'm Mm -hmm. like, who? I'm like, oh, him? Who is that? I don't know. And then he he explodes and then it's over. Um, (laughs) Exactly. But I I think that as the team dwindles down, you sort of get to know everyone a little bit better. I yeah, you get to pick some faves out. Love Keith David. I'm a Keith David stan. I love well, yes. his work in John Carpenter movies specifically, but I also just love him as an actor, as a voice actor. I That's think your Keith man. David is fucking great. But I I loved him. Um, Nalls on his roller skates playing Stevie Wonder. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, the relationship between Kurt Russell and the doctor, Dr. Blair, and then Dr. Blair's like sort of mm-hmm. assistant is Fuchs, and there's this sort of contention between what Fuchs is telling McCready, because they have sort of this tighter alliance where they're sort of boxing out Blair, who mm-hmm. is burdened with this knowledge, essentially. And they, like, lock <laughs> yeah. him away, and they they put him, like, out in the outhouse. Um, <laughs> and, he, and, yeah, he well, gets he his... Starts, he, yeah, he, like, went insane, and, yeah. And he starts, like, destroying their radios and stuff. But I'm like, mm-hmm. honestly, Diva, me too. Like, when you've seen a lot of these people <laughs> moved on way too fast from the mm-hmm. horrors, <laughs> like, the exploding dog, and then they're like, all right, yeah, so what are we going to do next? I was like, I need to go decompress. I need to go, like, take a uh-huh. hot shower or something like there's still <laughs> dog goo on my shoulder <laughs> russell like yeah. let me go calm down for a second yeah give me 20 minutes at least please 
Oh, Ugh. but there, but there was like even like the guy who likes the dog, and he'll let the dog inside, and it was sort of put on mm-hmm. him of like, oh, well, you were alone with the dog, and he's like, I just like the dog, but it's like, but now that's a cause for suspicion. And to your yeah, point, I think I liked the sort of teamwork element of it because that brings in the really crucial paranoia and who to trust. Mm-hmm. And are people what they seem? And how do you rule out who you trust and who you don't? And that's the real intrigue of the film. I think yeah. that, that's what keeps the beats going in between the awesome effects and body horror moments. Um, because I think typically the pointing fingers and debating, you know, the, the semantics of how the thing spreads, like I said, can get really boring really fast. Mm-hmm. But I think having such... I think 12 is a, gr- a great number, right? Because some characters yeah. can brutally die so. and you don't really care. And other ones, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. damn, but I don't want them to get right. Knowles. Like, I love Knowles. Yeah, I like that guy. He looks kind of like, um, oh, God, what's his name? From that 70s show. Oh, Windows. So there was a fucking yes, guy named yes, Windows, yes. which I was also obsessed with. I'm like, yeah, just call a uh, guy Windows. As they would on the base, uh-huh. I'm sure. He probably... And he's- yeah, and he was tweaking a little bit, but, like, to a degree that I think was warranted. But, yeah, he also, of course, brutally died. Yes. But I think the screen time amount for each of those, like, more side characters, because we kind of get the the bigger moments with perfect. Kurt Russell and Keith David, but those sort of secondary members of the group who are sort of scuttling around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, like, really good development. We don't need to know too much about them because, of course, they will die, but we know enough to sort of uh, yeah. get a sense of, like, their relationships and how they feel without the dialogue being too openly like we don't know really what any of them do for jobs like they don't say like we know the doctor we know dr blair is a doctor of some point of some sort and like is doing these autopsies but like what kind of doctor what are they even out here doing on this base in antarctica like we don't we don't really know we don't really have to know it's not about that um no which i liked i could appreciate that yeah, I was like, yeah, just call the guy Windows. Why not? Love sure, that. Yeah, I might as well. Yes, I wanted to ask you, though, if you had engaged oh, okay. it all with that recent, um, like, I want to call it like a forgery, but what's it called when people like make things up on the internet that aren't true? I don't know. Lies, I guess. Have you seen at all, though, <laughs> yeah. those like replications of um, somebody made a letterboxed account called just like John Carpenter and reviewed really? a bunch of movies <laughs> and people were like under the impression that it was like actually John Carpenter. Oh, and there I were a bunch that. of like reviews of his own movies in there that mm. were going sort of viral of him being like, oh, I was a hack back then. This movie is not good. <laughs> and if you're a fan of it, you're not a true fan of me. Mm. Like mm-hmm. shit like that that people thought were I thought they were so real to the point where I was sending screenshots of them into a group chat of people who love John Carpenter. And I was like, look at this really? shit. And they were like, is that <laughs> real? And I'm like, yeah, I think it's real. Like, I fully fall for it. Um, I'll post the uh, uh, links yeah, in the description get you below. Sometimes. So funny. But uh, then I got you know, come forward that they weren't real. And that John Carpenter actually himself tweeted. He tweeted, he's like, what's a letterboxed? He's like, I don't, he's like, I, he's like, whatever people are discussing. He's like, that's not me. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Because people were like, is this really you? And he's like, what, where am I? Like, no. (laughs) Girl, no. (laughs) But I was like, love love that for you, John. I love that. That's cute. John clapping back on Twitter saying that my ass is not on that website. (laughs) Girl, not me. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, but we want to get into it. Uh, so I feel like do we do we want to just open it up to because the film only has twelve characters, not including the dog and the Norwegians. So we could just yeah. do everyone. Because are there even really a main three like McCready, what Keith David, and maybe like Doctor Blair? But I don't even. I'm just. I mean, I'm gonna. I mean, if that's what it is, I'm gonna marry um, Keith David. Uh huh. I'm gonna. F- Fuck McCready, I guess, and then yep. I'm gonna kill the doctor. Yeah, I think I think I would have Easy. to agree. Unfortunately, I but think- outside of outside of that, I would fuck Windows until the sun <laughs> came up. <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. what I mean. If you don't have to tell me the year, I'm like, look at that man. Look at that man in his old yeah. <laughs> denim vest and his afro. Like that. It's 1982. I I'm aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I would I would also have to agree. I loved. Um, there was a character named Copper who had a nose ring. He was just, like, one yes. of the science guys who, like, was maybe tainting the blood at some point. And he just, like, had mm-hmm. a cunty little nose ring. Like, I really liked the the style. And Keith David had a little earring. Um, mm-hmm. We got a couple of different characters, like, in some, like, fun vests. Like, some people were dressed in just, like, fucking long johns and nothing else. And other people yeah. were, like, dressed down. I liked the variety. Cleaning out, yeah. I liked the variety mm-hmm. in that. And, of course, Love Nalls on his uh, roller skates. Of course, yeah. Very cute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... 
And then what are you going to eat and drink with this movie at your party? At your (laughs) The Thing party. I, it feels like a boys movie, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll tell you what, this is a not very informed menu that I'm going to have, but I, it feels really right to me um, because I've never had Malort. What? But I do think I, I've never had Malort. What is that? It's like, oh God, Dara, it's like this really um, horrible tasting liquor, I guess. Um, I wish I, it's very Midwestern, um, is a bitter wormwood based liquor that is distilled in the style of a Nordic. I don't even know how to say that. Um, it's pretty iconic, I guess, Ooh. but apparently it tastes like dog shit. Yikes. Um, but you know what? It just, it feels right to me. And then I'm going to say that you eat like a, gi- you serve like giant like corned beef sandwiches Ooh. or like Rubens mm, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I actually, I yeah. think that that's kind of spot on that the kind of bros who love the thing also love a Reuben sandwich. Yeah. You got to get, I feel like, and I, I'm not really one for deli meat. I think it looks kind of gross. And it just feels, it it just feels right for this. You know, get real sloppy with your Reuben. I like that. I like that. Because yeah. that's what I want to do on the base in Antarctica, you know? I want to yeah. bust down and eat a Reuben and then go mm-hmm. step out into the snow and get... At one point, they said it was negative 40 outside. They're like, don't step outside. It's negative 40. The sheer thought mm-hmm. of stepping into a negative 40 degree climate made my, like, spine slip out oh, of my yeah. ass. Like, absolutely <laughs> the fuck not. No, yeah. ma'am. They were bundled yeah. and I was, I was like, getting cold Still, by proxy. Yeah. I did not mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you? I liked, I mean, obviously there's just like tons of scenes of people just smoking joints at the beginning of this movie, yeah, well, which yeah. I think is really funny. I think that's part of the romanticization of Antarctica for me. So I'm like, they're blazing it up, doing science, chilling. Like that seems, <laughs> I'm sure like once boredom Pretty kicks tight. in, you're like, how many times can we play this board game before we kill each other? Like that's yes. when it edges into non-romantic territory. Um mm-hmm. We also get a lot of drinking of scotch straight from the bottle, which to your, gro- yes, your yes. point, like a really gross liquor, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think you should like make a snow cone out of just like whiskey and shaved ice <laughs> and I have like, like some sort of nasty like whiskey snow cone. I also think smoke smoke indoors uh, for sure. This is a smoke in- yes. inside movie. Um, and... Yeah, that was really, I, I thought just also snow cone, um, if you put maple syrup, did you ever do that as a kid? So you put maple oh, syrup in the no, snow but that and then you eat so it. Good. I think that with some whiskey, like a maple whiskey snow that cone. That's great. Um, in the spirit of McCready, I think he would, he would fuck with one of those. Yeah, I think you're right. But you, I don't really want to eat during this movie, to be frank. I want to, I want to look yeah, at the gross. That, that also came up in my thoughts, but you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like you can either, yeah, not do it or you just lean right into it. And then um, I have two options to follow this up at okay. our, our thing party. They're two Please. wildly different directions. I think okay. uh, very similar. We're hitting the same beats. I think you just watch Alien after this. I think it's really similarly like the Fair team enough. of people on the job site, this ominous looming presence of a great practical mm-hmm. effect that's about to strike <laughs> at some point, you know, tension amongst the crew. Is there an imposter? I think it's really similar. And I just love the movie Alien. And I think it would be... Yeah. I think maybe almost you do this one second, though. You do, like, some chronological... You do an Among Us-themed party. Yeah, and you I watch, like that. You watch, like, the, the movies about calling someone out. And then you have to, like, play rounds in between. Um, I fucking okay. hate that game, though. I'm awful. I'm always awful really? at those, those uh, deception games. Two Truths and a Lie or some shit. I'm so bad at it. I'm bad at... So I've played a handful of them. It depends on the game, but yeah, I'm not great. But I did really enjoy Among Us. I just and never it's really to hide behind a screen. I never learned the rules like good enough, so I'd always play and just be wandering around, and everyone would be like, <laughs> really? "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm trying to figure out how this game works." And they're like, "Well, you're the imposter." And I'm like, "Well, yeah, you got me. Like, I don't know what to do." <laughs> so sure. I never, I never got into it, but I'm, a, I'm an awful liar, and I'm awful at telling. Yeah. I'm really gullible, too. If somebody's like, I'm this person, I'm like, okay, well, I believe you. <laughs> I don't, you give me no reason not to. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but my, okay, other, movie, other, option, my other movie suggestion is you watch Balto, obviously. 
<laughs> what is that? I don't even Balto? know that movie. You don't know Balto? No, Balto no I don't know Balto. What? If you're if you don't know a bitch whose sexual awakening was Balto, Balto's the reason there are so many furries. Okay, I'll say it. It's this kids huh. movie about like sled dogs, and Balto in real life was a sled dog who led a very important serum run um, up in Alaska. Wow! Did you ever have to do that in school where you did several units throughout several years of your fundamental elementary education where you learned about dog sled racing? I f- remember reading a book about it. Very specifically, but that's like just about it. We always had to learn about the serum runs and the dog sled racing, and I was I like, "Don't even know what you're talking." about. Like serum should runs, be, it- yeah, to get like medicine uh, up in Alaska, yeah. and they would do dog yeah, sled did- races, you know, up to wherever the closest civilization huh. that had medicine was. It's probably like for polio or something. I don't really yeah, know, but sense. Balto Balto's the 1995 live action animated adventure action feature, and who fucking voices Balto? Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon is the voice of Balto, and that's why he's so sexy. And he's also like a, a dog with a chiseled <laughs> jawline. So, <laughs> well, yes, yes, of course. So you can you can watch Balto as a treat. Okay, if you're okay. a furry, yeah. you can watch Balto as a treat. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure I watched it as a kid, but I have truly zero recollection. So maybe that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What about you? Um, I'm gonna say you go for more iconic practical effects, and I think you watch Jaws. I want oh. another big monster. I okay. want a little team. Would, yeah, and I, would I, you? I, like the, I really like the dynamic of those boys together. So see, and that's interesting because would you classify Jaws as being a more impressive feat of practical effects than the thing? No, no, not not impressive. I think it it, it was certainly iconic. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I wouldn't say impressive. Because I was going to say that's a wild statement because I think the thing was like, I think maybe this is the best uh, visual example of the boundaries and, and limits of a practical, practical effects. effects and how it's yeah. way, it's way better than you think it is. Like you, oh, you can do some real crazy shit if you, again, have uh, funds, time, research mm-hmm. and development and like a creative team. You can make real shit mm-hmm. look really fucking cool. Uh, that's mm-hmm. what I really liked about this movie is the display Word. of artistry. I mm-hmm. just want mm-hmm. a cut of all the effects, and then I want a video breaking down how they made there's all of them. Be, there must there's be. There's got to be like behind the scenes stuff for it. I, I yeah. love it though. I need to know. Like, yeah, I'm sure let's, they have like. Give you a. Derek gets a deep dive. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what are you going to give this movie out of ten? I'm going to give it like a seven and a half, maybe an eight. I think it. It's very iconic. I think it's important. I think it's a genre defining. And I will say, I think it's John Carpenter's best film that I've Mm. seen. I really like They Live as well, but I think this this really pushed it over the edge with the Mm. visual, just like insanity. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah, hard seven. Yeah. Um, I think there was certainly times it felt a little slow for me. Mm -hmm. Um. Which I think is just John Carpenter and, you know, how movies were back then as opposed to today. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And like you said, I think the um, every jump was really warranted. And I think they did. It was just so well done, dude. Yeah. Like, it's it's truly a master class in practical effects. I, I do agree with you there. I will. Um, I'll say yeah. if you're a practical effects girly and you like that kind of stuff, the new Beetlejuice movie is actually a really good one to see if you're into really? that kind of stuff. Um, did you see it? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Not yet. Oh, no. Well, it was all right. I mean, it's it's a sequel, you know? It's it's a, sure. it's a sequel film based off of an iconic older IP that there's no way they're ever yeah. going to live up to it, but they're trying their best. But they did a lot of um, Tim Burton, again, for all of his toxic male faults, yeah. is very much a proponent of doing things practically rather than yeah. uh, digitized, which is always just more fun and cool to watch, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, the yeah. new Beetlejuice movie had a lot of cool costumes and sets and practical nice. effects. Um, so if, good, yeah, good. Go, go see that one in the theater as well. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite things, because we're probably not going to talk about it on the Patreon or anywhere, but one of my favorite things about the new Beetlejuice movie was that mm-hmm. the dad character, the one that's married to Catherine O'Hara, oh, that, yes, yes, yes. that like ginger guy, I don't even know the actor's <laughs> name, which is a good thing because he is mm-hmm. incredibly problematic and is like actually has been legally tried for soliciting sex from a minor. Like he's like yeah, deeply... Like deeply actually a pedophile yeah just a fucked up person Um, and he sort of got phased out of hollywood like almost altogether. but this was one of those last 
things that he was clinging on to mm-hmm. that was like, well, he was in the first one and they just totally wrote him out by just killing off his character. It. And then in any flashback instances where you would need to see him, they either made the whole scene in claymation, fucking loved that, or they made it that the way he died was that he got decapitated at the waist. So he was just a walking pair of legs that they obviously could just use someone else for. So they don't ever, they didn't have to involve that actor okay. while still keeping his character a part of the story is they took him out and his likeness basically out entirely, yeah. which I thought was like a great way to write a shitty man out of your story. That's awesome. More That's people, fucking awesome. More movie Isn't... makers need to be doing that. Of like, oh, and then he's just claymation and then we kill him because that guy sucked, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. right. Me as an um, audience, that's what I want. The way that with, when sometimes they'll write out an actor because they're problematic in a TV show or a movie, and they'll be like, oh, he's gone now. And I'm like, no, do something uh-huh. creative to make it fold into the story that they're gone now and like kill them violently mm-hmm. because we hate that guy now, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, how did he die in that? Because I thought I had heard something like it was in a plane crash, like going to Hawaii or something like that. And that was a reference to um, uh, another sequel that they had had in the works, but never got made, obviously, called Beetlejuice Goes Hawaii or Hawaiian or something like that. I love that. Um, and that and so that was like their way of working that lore into the movie and everything like that. Yes, um, I, I heard this from some other bro podcast. That for was sure, the but. whole um the whole claymation sequence mm-hmm. that they did where they're like, oh this character we killed off, we'll explain it. And so that we don't have to show this actor who's a bad guy, it will just be mm-hmm. claymation. And it was like a plane crash all in claymation, which was really cool. Love, but then they love. show him in the afterlife later and they just show that he is decapitated at the waist. So, Amazing. like, you know, in, in the plane crash, mangled enough so that we don't have to involve that actor's face sure. at all, which is pretty Dope. great. Yeah. Love that. Um, that is. But I was really happy that we watched this movie this week. It was a big one on yeah. my personal list that I was looking to check off, as we are mm-hmm. doing with this whole month, sort of just horror Halloween-y vibes movies that I haven't seen and would like to see. So stick around for Mm -hmm. that. We'll be doing that for the rest of the month. Uh, As always, you can click the links in the description below to just see what we're doing on social media. Or if you want to support us on Patreon, that is also an option you have. You can listen Mm -hmm. to a whole back catalog of about a year's worth of bonus episodes. We do them Mm -hmm. on a monthly basis where we lately have been trying to talk about more newer films, like stuff that's out in theaters now. But I think we have some random older patreon episodes that are just about you know random movies Mm -hmm. that people in the patreon uh, suggested that we cover and things of that sort so if you want to check that out feel free but not you know we're chilling we're chilling over here in the swamp thank you for being here thank you for listening take care of yourself happy halloween if you celebrate send us your costumes if you've got a good costume planned specifically if you have a good movie costume planned like even if it's not done, let me know what you're plotting on plotting and scheming because that's actually the best part of the halloween costume i I need some less I, I need the lesbians out there. I need if you and your girlfriend are doing um, the Love substance. Life's bleeding. Oh, the substance. No, Elizabeth and um, Sue. Yes. Please, please send me your costumes. Oh. Or, or yeah, Love Lies Bleeding. Also, that's another yeah. Good one. I was, I was for real looking at like the gym tank top of like where Kristen Stewart's the gym that she works at. Uh, that tank yeah. top she wears the whole time during that movie, and I was like, oh, I need this like a hole in the head, but I do mm-hmm. like. It's in my cart uh, in an Etsy shop. Let's oh, course, say that much. Yeah. I expect nothing else. Yeah. Speaking of merch, we have some pretty mediocre merch that we offer. It's fine. Uh, it's and it's pretty. <laughs> but the best part about it is it's somewhat reasonably priced. Uh, so if you want a swamp sweatshirt as we enter these colder months. Also, if you mm-hmm. like other merch from us, we go through a distributor. Yeah. This is like weird, weird side corner. But we go through this distributor that allows us to put a design on like almost anything. Just so about for, anything. For some reason, if you're like, we need swamp shot glasses. Like I can probably make that happen. I just don't because we don't sell a lot of merch because, you know, we're <laughs> no. pretty, pretty low level podcast. But if for some reason there's ever a product that's usually widely available for merchandising type things that you would like, notebooks, I don't know. The, there are limitless uh, options so just let us know if you'd like to see something specific or if you'd like new designs maybe i don't know yeah merch corner but anyways closing this out locking this in hopefully no one here is the thing otherwise we are all <laughs> gonna have to flamethrower ourselves to the grave um yeah love you. Do. goodbye and good night